Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in the previous video, we looked at how to add Stripe payments into a Blazor WebAssembly client side. So like we looked at how to add the card element and do all the UI stuff. If you haven't checked it out, uh, I'm gonna leave it in the cards and in the description down below. But today we're gonna look at the backend. So in here, basically the only difference from the from last week, it's in the client side, I added the calling backend, which I'm just doing a post to the backend and serializing the billing information. And as always, all the code is in the GitHub and the link is down below. And I also do it based on kind of like my commits. So you can see all what I did today in the video, you'll just see it here. So you can go and copy and paste the code and like look at exactly what I was doing. And so if, because there's a lot of code as you can see, so I'm gonna skim through part of it, but all the code is here. So you can just go and check it out and download the, the project and, and run it as well. All right, so now let's go to the backend. So I created a controller and I only created the Activates, uh, Activate subscription. Once you get started, like once you figure out one of them, then Stripe has a very good documentation for all the other ones. So like, for example, once you figure out how to do create subscription and everything, all the other ones is just calling their other functions and it's all in their documentation and they have it for .NET and everything. I just use the best practices I'm leaving because in here they just have the, the, the API key on the code. You should have that in a key vault or somewhere. So jumping back into the code. So in here, basically I'm verifying the request and this is just like an input validation. So in here, I, you can see it's very, like I'm just checking that it's not null, that like all the fields are not white space. In here, I would want to add more validation, maybe like check that the email is actually an email and that the payment ID matches some regex. I also have here checking DB because usually you have a range of like payment IDs, which is basically what plans people can subscribe to. You usually have them in a database. So I have like an if statement that if you want to check the database, it goes and checks the database. All the code uh, has the database stuff commented out. The reason for that is I want you to be able to just download it and test it out uh, without having to set up a database and all this stuff. So I commented that out. So in case you guys wanted to add it later, but it's not required to run. And obviously this wouldn't be like production ready because you want to keep who has subscribed and everything in your database. But as, as I said, this is just to get you started going back to the controller. Then after that, I just go and call activate subscription. And then here I verify it again, just because it's a public function. And if it's false, I return. And then here I actually get the plan from the database. That's why I make it false. So like in the verify sub, I, I made it false because either way I'm getting the plan later. So I'm gonna verify the plan later. So I just made it false. So I don't make two calls to it. And if there is no, no one I, I return. And then in here I'm getting the API key. And here I'm using my key vault secret uh, manager. I actually cover that in another video. So I'm gonna link that video in the card up here. But basically this keeps all your secrets in Key Vault and just to make sh to, to show you which one it is. So it's in your test API keys, you have the public key. This one goes into JavaScript that we used last time. This one is a server side, so it's the secret key. So this one is the one that you copy and that's why I have it in a Key Vault because it's supposed to be like a secret key. And then after that, I check if the customer exists and if not, I create one. So basically I check my database for customers and here, once again, I commented it out and I assume that it's null so that the customer doesn't exist. And then I go ahead and create the customer which this just uses the Stripe services. So like I create a new customer service and I add the customer with a name and email and create the customer. As, as you can see here, I'm not passing it, like the payment ID, which is the credit card. I'm gonna do that later. So then I do update customer default payment ID. So in here, I basically grab the customer ID that I just created and the payment method, which is a payment ID that comes from a Stripe client side. And here I pass a, cu a customer ID and I attach the payment method. And then after that, so now we have created in Stripe a customer and we have attached which way that customer is gonna pay. So then the last thing we have to do is create the subscription. So if we go here, like I'm just creating the subscription with, for the customer ID and in here I just add the price. So right now I hard coded it in our, in, in our creation of the object and the price basically is what type of subscription you want. So like, for example, in here I have a bunch of subscriptions and like usually you would give obviously the 
the customer an option to choose which subscription they want. And here I'm just hard coding it because once again, this is just to get you started. And this is the one you have to copy. So this one is the one that tells Stripe, like this is what you have to charge. And as you can see here, like this one is like three US dollars a month. So then I, I pass that and here I left the code for a free trial. So like if you want to give a free trial or something, you just tell Stripe like, hey, like we're going to do a free trial and it ends in 30 days and Stripe will take care of the whole free trial thing. You don't have to add any logic to your code and everything. It will automatically start charging once the free trial is over. And then here I just try to do the subscription and then it catches a Stripe exception. That's what happens when a subscription fails. and. If it fails, I pass down the error and pass it back. So that's pretty much it. I know I glanced through a lot of the code, so make sure to check it out in the GitHub. And now let's just give it a try. All right, so in here we just go to slash pay as last time. Enter our information and enter the credit card number. It's always a test one is 42 all the way. And we're gonna click pay. And as I mentioned last time, like we're gonna go to Stripe, send a credit card, they're gonna return a, a payment method ID, which is then what we attach to the customer. So now this is on the server side. We get here, we check if the customer exists, we update the customer's default payment ID, and we create the subscription. And here we try to create it. And here you can see like what it returned, like it gives you a subscription ID, like if there's any tax stuff and then you just return it all right now that it's returned we can see our result so the first result how i did it with my post api I think that you can look at it back here the first thing is if there was success getting to the server and that case is yes we were able to talk to the server and then i uh, deserialized the re actual result and here we can see that the subscription was created successfully I didn't add any code to like where to direct the user, but in here you would redirect them to your application or something. If there's an error, you would display the error so the user can fix it. And if there's an error contacting the server, you would be like, hey, like there's an error contacting the server, please try again later. So that's basically how you add Stripe uh, subscriptions to your .NET application. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.